Hi there. Welcome to the Visual ModFlow Flex video training series. My name is Braden McNeil and I'm the lead software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll discuss the seventh step in the conceptual modeling workflow using Visual ModFlow Flex. When property zones and boundary conditions have been applied to your conceptual model, you must then generate one or more grids in order to convert the conceptual to a numerical model. Once these grids or meshes have been generated, you'll merge the conceptual model elements with the available grids in order to translate to a traditional numerical model. For the unstructured grids and meshes used by ModFlow USG and FeeFlow, the greater mesh will be generated around the main model components. In other words, the location of boundary conditions become the initial nodes around with which the rest of the unstructured grid or mesh is generated. When you finish assigning your final boundary condition, you should see the following window. At this step, you can create finite different grids for ModFlow, unstructured vGrids for ModFlow USG, or finite element meshes for FeeFlow models. In this video, we'll explore the workflow for generating unstructured grids and finite element meshes. The finite difference grid creation process was covered in the previous video. And please note that it's possible to return to this workflow step at any time to generate a new grid or mesh. Click the Define Finite Element Mesh or Define Unstructured vGrid button to begin the process. The processes for generating both types of these grids are essentially identical. In each case, you'll define add-in lines, points, and polygons, which will be the model elements around which the grid will be generated, and then you'll specify mesh generation settings. In this example, I'm going to work first through the unstructured ModFlow USG grid process. Clicking either option will open a window like this, which allows you to define the add-in points, polylines, and polygons. The add-ins for the grid represent the main geom geometry of the model region from which Voronoi cells are generated. The add-ins consist of the model boundary, which is a closed polygon, and additionally one or more add-ins. These add-ins are polylines, points, or polygons within the model boundary, uh, typically used uh, to define boundary conditions, which Visual ModFlow Flex then uses as node generators for the grid generation process. When developing unstructured grids, these model elements will be placed at the center of the unstructured grid cells whereas for finite element meshes, these model elements will translate to the nodes of the mesh. All data objects which have been used to define model elements should automatically be selected as add-in objects, as you can see here, and they should also be displayed in the preview window to the right. A standard set of tools are available which will allow you to zoom and pan into areas of interest within this um, preview window. Additional data objects can also be selected from the data tree and loaded into the add-in lines points polygons table by selecting them from the data tree and then clicking on the add-in line points polygons button. In this example, um, I've added in a polygon, but I'm not going to actually use it for the grid generation, so I can use this checkbox to turn that off. This means that it won't be, uh, it won't actually take a part in the grid generation process despite the fact that it's listed in this table. When the required data objects have all been loaded into this table, you can then proceed to the next step, which is to define the various settings that control the cell sizes and the approximate number of cells. Unstructured grids are created using the Triangle Mesh Generator, which was developed by J.R. Shuchuk in 1970. In VMOD Flex, this mesh generator is used to create a Delaunay triangulation, and from this, Voronoi grid cells are created. These Voronoi grid cells are then suitable for ModFlow USG grids. More details on Voronoi polygons and Delaunay triangulation can be found on our website. A link has been included in the video description. You can also find more details about the triangle meshing algorithm uh, from the triangle website. A link to that website has also been included in the video description. So the triangle mesh generator provides various options for generating unstructured grids, and these options are all listed here on the left-hand side of the Define Unstructured Grids window. The total, uh, first there's a, an option for the meshing algorithm. Um, two options are included, divide and conquer and incremental. Typically the divide and conquer algorithm will be preferred, however if that algorithm fails to generate a, a, an acceptable grid you can use the incremental algorithm. The total number of elements setting is a starting point for the grid generator and it's an approximation of how many cells will comprise the area outside the refinement regions. The actual total number of cells generated in the grid will depend on the geometry add-ins that you've included and the refinement settings and will typically be much higher than the total number of approximate elements. 
As a rule of thumb though, the actual number of Voronoi cells that will result from the grid generator is typically within the same order of magnitude as the value that you define in this total number of elements field. Fortunately in Visual Modflow Flex, you can repeat the grid generation process several times creating multiple grids, allowing you to find the most suitable grid size and refinement level for your particular project. The quality mesh or minimum angle setting allows you to specify a minimum angle constraint on the generated mesh elements. This is set to 30 degrees by default and should be maintained at 30 degrees if possible. Then there are several uh, settings related to the refinement along add-in elements. The refinement along super element border edges field allows you to specify a target length for the line segments that comprise the model boundary domain. This option will refine areas around the model edge. The refinement along line add-ins field allows you to specify uh, target edge length for triangles along polyline add-ins, such as this river component here. This will result in further refinement along polyline model elements. And finally, there are refinement around points and well add-in settings, which allow you to refine the areas around points or well add-ins. Refinement for these point add-ins are defined by specifying the number of triangles around each of these points and the desired distance from the point to the new vertices. You can also use the gradation slider bar to specify the smoothness of the transition from the fine elements around the points to the coarser elements. A smoother transition will result in more elements, but should lead to a more regular element distribution and therefore improved model stability. When these grid refinement settings have been input, simply click the Generate button. The triangle algorithm will then run and generate an unstructured grid based on your model elements. This will take a, just a minute or two and we'll see the grid will automatically be loaded up in the preview window whenever the algorithm is finished running. Now if you're not satisfied with the grid at this point, you can always change the refinement settings and click the Generate button again uh, in order to you know, create a new grid before actually finalizing it and, add, and adding it into the model explorer. Um, so let's just briefly demonstrate the, the effects of this gradation bar. So if I click generate again we should see a new grid being generated uh, with much more refinement um, a much finer distribution from these smaller grid cells around the important model elements out to these empty areas. And there we have it. Please note that when generating Modflow USG unstructured grids, it's not possible currently to perform any layer refinement. That means that your model layers will simply align perfectly with the model structural layers. Future versions of VMod Flex will introduce layer refinement capabilities for unstructured grids. So whenever we're finished and we're happy with the grid, uh, we just click the Finish button and then we should see the new unstructured grid added into the Model Explorer. So we can return now to the Select Grid Type window again at any point in order to generate additional grids. So let's go quickly through an example for the finite element mesh process. When generating finite element meshes, the exact same process is follow followed, however, um, you'll have a f an additional step of defining the vertical grid type for finite element meshes. So once again we just define the polyline or lines points polygon add-ins which we'll use to generate the triangular mesh. Click the generate button in order to actually generate the mesh and preview it. And when that's finished we now click next and we have the option of defining the vertical grid type for the fee flow model. The vertical grid type options were discussed in the previous video, um, but we can quickly demonstrate the process here. So, before finalizing the finite element mesh, we would have to select a mesh type or a layer type from the menu at the top. We would also have to, have to specify a minimum layer thickness, since FIFLO models also don't allow lateral discontinuity um, in, the, in the model layers. Or in other words, FeeFlow doesn't support layers that do not extend throughout the entire model domain. It's also possible to apply our layer refinement. Uh, once again, simply type the layer refinement ratio into this table at the bottom and then click apply to apply the changes. 
And once again, once your finite element mesh is finished, click the Finish button and we'll see it added into the Model Explorer at the bottom left. These uh, grids will now be available when converting your conceptual model to a numerical model. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual ModFlow Flex training videos. In the next video, I'll discuss the final step in the conceptual modeling workflow, which is to merge the conceptual model elements and the grids that we've generated into a traditional grid and numerical model. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the Visual ModFlow Flex support page on our website. A link is provided in the video description.